Shalom to the royal family of Israel. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yahweh and in the name of His mighty Son, Yahweh Bashem Mashiach Yahweh I want to give a salutation to all the mighty men, mighty women, and mighty children of Israel. And today's lesson is, can we entertain strangers? That's a very good question, ladies and gentlemen. Can we entertain strangers? You know, as a Christian, you're supposed to show hospitality. But do you show that hospitality to everybody and anyone? What if the person's a killer and they kill your whole family? Or what if they're an angel and you missed out on a blessing? You don't know. So today we're asking the question, and hopefully we can answer the question using the Bible. Can we entertain strangers? I ain't know where my hand. He was all black man. He had a beard. His brain going to. Hey, no lie, bro. When I dropped that video for y'all the other day and I told y'all God had sent me an angel, bro. This dude just described exactly what he looked like, bro. I promise. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Let me get the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 35. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. This is Yahawasha. And what Yahawasha was saying, when he was hungry, when he was thirsty, and when he needed a place to stay, he was received. Should you entertain strangers? Should you entertain any stranger? Because this happened to be the son of the Most High God, Yahweh Bahashem Hamashach Yahweh. And he'll hold that against you if you don't give charity to the poor. He'll hold that against you. But we need to get further evidence. Can we entertain strangers? Let me get the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Now, it tells you that some have entertained angels unaware. Does that mean every stranger that shows up to your house is an angel unaware? What if it's a Edomite that's six foot three, 300 pounds with a hockey mask and a machete in his hand? Do you entertain that guy knowing that's going to be your last day? I mean, it's a damn shame he showed up to your door. You might be in trouble. But right here it says... Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Now, what does entertain mean? Giving to hospitality, feeding, letting them be housed. Here, let's get an account of our forefather Abraham entertaining angels unaware. Let me get the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he saw in the tent door in the heat of the day so this was abraham and he was standing in the tent of the door and he looked up and he saw the lord and the lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. but he did not know it was the lord he didn't know 
And he did. He went. He had his servants go cut up and prepare a lamb. He had his wife prepare food and drink for him. He even washed their feet. So he showed hospitality to the Lord. Did not know it was the Lord. It was the Lord and two angels. Let's get another account of entertaining angels unaware. The book of Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So Lot, the nephew of Abraham, saw two angels coming over to Sodom. Now Lot was part of the leadership so he sat at the gate of Sodom and he saw these two angels coming. And what did he do? He bowed himself to the ground. He allowed them to come into the house. Now, unfortunately, the butt hungry homosexuals that stayed in Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to bust their door down to get at them. And that's how come Sodom and Gomorrah is no more. Let's get another account of an angel, even though you don't know it's an angel. Let me get the book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 4. Read. The book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 4. Therefore, when he went to seek a, a man, he found Raphael that was an angel. Then he said unto him, Go and tarry not. So he went in and said to his father, Behold, I have found one which will go with me. Then he said, Call him unto me, that I may know of what tribe he is, and whether he be a trusty man to go with thee. So he called him, and he came in and they saluted one another. So Raphael, who did not appear as an angel, by the way, he appeared before Tobias because Tobias was going to make a journey. He wanted to make a journey, but Tobit didn't want him to go alone. So Tobit told him, go find someone to go with you so you don't go by yourself. Well, he found Raphael, who was disguised as a regular Israelite. And he said, hey, hold on right here. Let me go tell my dad that I got somebody that's going to go with me. And what did Tobit say to Tobias? He said, tell him to come here so I can know what tribe he belongs to. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art. To whom he said, Dost thou seek for a tribe or family, or an hired man to go with thy son? Then Tobit said unto him, I would know, brother, thy kindred and name. Then he said, I am Azarius the son of Aninus, the great, and of thy brethren. He's asking, what tribe, what family do you belong to? And how does Raphael respond to him? He asks him, do you seek for a tribe or family, or are you looking for some hired man to go with your son? So Raphael tells him, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the great. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and Jonathus, sons of the great Semias, as we went together to Jerusalem to worship, and offered the firstborn and the tenths of the fruits. And they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. My brother, thou art of a good stock. Notice he starts name dropping. He tells him, you're of a good stock. He says, I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of the great Samias. And he even talked about the occurrence of when they went up to Jerusalem to make their animal sacrifice and how they were righteous men. So guess what he did? He proved that man before he allowed him around his son. You should entertain strangers because you may, some have entertained angels unawares. But now let's see what the scripture actually says about the character of some strangers because every stranger is not the same. You have strangers that are of the children of Israel. You have strangers that are sojourners they, they travel a long way and then you have the other 17 nations the heathen nations the gentiles that are strangers let's get the book of sarak chapter 8 verse 18 read the book of sarak chapter 8 verse 18 
do no secret thing before a stranger for thou knowest not what he will bring forth open not thine heart to every man lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn so don't be revealing everything to us um, to a stranger don't be having conversations that you ordinarily would have with a personal confidant or your fellow brother in any camp with a total stranger just because they appeared before you don't be saying hey this is what this this is what our game plan is going to be we're going to be here on this date and over here we're going to be here on this day you don't just invite anybody into your meetings you don't invite anybody into your house because look at what the scripture says for thou knowest not what he will bring forth he might bring forth disaster to you he may very well be an agent he might be someone who sent to kill you he might be a spy you have no idea who this individual is why because you didn't prove him open not thine heart to every man that don't that also includes your house you have some people who will actually loan their cars to people they barely know you'll loan out your car to someone who's irresponsible and then when he wrecks your car, he'll blame you. Well, you shouldn't have let me use your car. You don't just let anybody sleep on your couch. You might wake up and all your furniture is gone and you tied up. It says, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. You let somebody inside your house and all of a sudden he's eating up all your food. He's eating up all your kids' fruit snacks and Oreo cookies and looking at your wife, trying to make moves, trying to figure out how to get rid of you so he can replace you. I want to be in the big bedroom with her. And this is because you open up your doors. Let me get the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 12. Read the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 12. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. So even before you go into a house, when you come up to a house, you're supposed to salute that house. And before you enter into that house, it says, and if the house be worthy, you're supposed to examine this thing, prove this thing. This might be a place where you shouldn't go in. Here, let me give you an example. A lot of you like to go to Las Vegas. A lot of those hotels are demon filled. You'll go into those rooms and them demons will jump right on you. It is nothing but evilness in there. You walked in that thing and you didn't see all of the demonic images that they have all on the walls they have that stuff etched in and when they say sin city they're not playing now all of a sudden you don't understand how come you in here having sex with a hooker but you've been married to your wife for 25 years never cheated on her before in your life you get into this room with all of these masonic imagery on the wall get demon possessed now all of a sudden you got chlamydia and it says let your peace come upon it but if it not be worthy, let your peace return to you. Meaning, leave. Don't go up in there. Let me get the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. See, this is one of the ways, really, in which to prove somebody. If they're not receptive of the law, statutes, and commandments, they're bucking up against it. You know, you speak about the laws and they'll tell you, well, you know, God is love. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to do me. Then you got to shake your, you got to shake the dust off your feet. You got to leave that person alone. I, I, I said what I said based off of the oracles of the most high God. There is nothing else that I need to say. You don't got to keep dealing with no sinners. Let me get the book of third John chapter one, verse five, read. The book of third john chapter 1 verse 5 beloved thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to the strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well so earlier i said you had two types of strangers well three types of strangers right i told you about these in this context right here this is talking about fellow israelites that are sojourners they travel from long ways you live in la they live in new york they travel to la from new york you know that they're an israelite in the truth right 
it says beloved thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren so how you treat your brother is how you treat this stranger you know he's in his fringes you know what camp he belongs to right it says which have borne witness of thy charity before the church whom if thou bring for, forward on their journey so remember we said that the strangers are travelers after a godly sort so they keep the law statutes and commandments they're not they're not just any nigga that you're just going to let come up into your house so they can tie you up they might come in your house and have a gun on you yeah, you don't know what you got going on in there around your wife around your kids thou shalt do well look the lord the scripture is saying that you will do well let me get the book of joshua chapter 9 verse 1 read the book of joshua chapter 9 verse 1 and it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against lebanon the hittite and the amorite the canaanite the Perizzite, the hivite and the jebusite heard thereof so you had all of these different heathen nations and Joshua didn't have any idea who these people were, but let's find out. Look at Joshua chapter 9, verse 5. And old shoes and clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua upon the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, We be come from a, from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. So we're talking about heathen nations. Heathen nations come up, came up to the camp and they came to Joshua and they're looking all bummy with old shoes and holes in their in they clothes and looking all sickly with, with moldy bread. And they said, men of Israel, let's make a league. Let's make a league. Like, nigga, I don't know you. Look at Joshua chapter nine, verse seven. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, peradventure ye dwell among us and how shall we make a league with you and they said unto joshua we are thy servants and joshua said unto them who are ye and from whence come ye look at what joshua asked them because joshua now is testing them he's proving them i'm not just going to let you be here around my people or my women my children i'm not going to let you do that he said who are you where you come from i need some answers so you're supposed to prove a person you don't just let them come through so when we're asking can we entertain strangers here we got some strangers these canaanite strangers hell no you don't just entertain anybody you need to find out what's going on what's who are you what's what's happening with you test them let me get the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7 read the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7 if thou wouldest get a friend prove him first to be not hasty to credit him for some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. This is a mic drop, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord right here is telling you to prove a friend. So can we entertain strangers? Scripture says prove prove a friend. Prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Hey, friend, come on in. What are you, a Canadian? Hey, friend, come on in, friend. Come eat some biscuits and maple syrup, friend. Hell no. No, I need to prove you. For I need to find out what it, what time it is with you. We read in the scripture, hey, if he's of a godly sort, remember the scripture? If he's of a godly sort, because right here it says, for some man is a friend for his own occasion. Yeah, I'll be friends with you while you're feeding me, while you're letting me kick it at your spine. But when Esau come busting through the door to come round us up, all of a sudden you turning against me. Hey, man, I'm not with them. I don't know them. Friend for his own occasion, watch this, and will not be and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. So when they rounding you up, cuffing you up, hemming you up, he going to be on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's some, and his kids are in the room sleep. So today we ask the question, can we entertain strangers? And here's the answer. If they are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, if they are descendant of the transatlantic slave trade, sub-Saharan African slave trade, Assyrian captivity, and they keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, then yes, you can entertain that stranger. 
If not, if you if you don't fall in any of what we just said, shut the door on their ass. And with that, shalom. 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 Shalom.